everyone. In this video, we're going to do a deep dive into one of my favorite features in the new Affinity app, Studios. In this lesson, we'll talk about how to customize default studios, as well as create your very own. Are you ready? Let's get started. I touched on what studios are in the last lesson, but as a refresher, they're a way of organizing your tools and panels into workspaces for the various types of projects you might be working on. While they're similar to Studio Link and Personas from version two, where you could switch between the apps without losing your work or switch between the personas and use various tools, studios are fully customizable and everything stays within the same app. Even better, unlike personas from version two, tools are not specific to a particular studio. You can add any tool within the app to any existing studio or create your own custom studio with any of the tools available. Most of the studios can be found as toolbar icons along the top left side of your workspace with additional studios found under the vertical ellipses to the right. In the case of liquify develop and tone mapping, you'll find those studios on the contextual toolbar when you have an image in place and selected. So you can see those here. When you first open the app, you're going to see four default studios toggled on, vector, pixel, layout, and Canva AI. As I mentioned in the previous video, for all intents and purposes, these first three are designer, photo, and publisher. And all of the tools, with the exception of I believe one from photo, have been included here in the Affinity app and are not behind a paywall. This fourth default studio, Canva AI, does require a Canva Pro subscription to use some of the tools within it, but it's entirely optional, and those are the only tools behind that paywall. Studios can be toggled on by going to the vertical ellipses at the right here. One note for those who use what was Export Persona in version two, those tools are now here in the Slice Studio. You can have as many or as few studios toggled on as you'd like. If you add more than the toolbar can leave visible, eventually you'll get a double carrot here and you can see that anything that's not showing will be showing under this drop down. If you don't want to toggle on the visibility of a studio, but still want to open it, again, go to the vertical ellipses and you can just click on the name. You can see that it's not toggled on up here, but the tools from the studio are now selected. If you want to change the look of the icon itself, including the name of the studio, you can right click on the icon and choose edit. This will allow you to change the name. You can change the color of the icon. You can remove the color completely. You can also change the icon itself. If you click on the icon, you can pull in your own custom one. Now I'm gonna cancel this because I don't wanna change that. Right clicking also gives you a number of other options. If I change the layout of the studio, which I'm going to show you how to do in a moment, you'll choose update once you're done. If you click on revert, it's going to take you back to its last save default while resetting to master is going to take you back to the factory settings. I'm going to skip over import here and take you over to the vertical ellipses because when I right click on the studios there, you can see I have both an import and an export option. Exporting your studios makes it a lot easier to share them between machines. So in other words, I've created these studios here and exported them, and then I was able to easily pull them onto my laptop. Now you can share studios with other people, and it's not a bad idea to have exports of your studios on hand as backup in case something happens. And finally, you can reorder your studios here simply by dragging them. So you can see when I pull slice up, it's moved it there. Now there's no revert option for the order of the studios. If you want to bring it back to where it was, you just need to manually drag it. To edit the layout of an existing studio, I can make whatever changes I would like to the top toolbar, the tools at the left, or the panels, and then right click on the studio icon and choose update. So right now I have the vector studio selected. If I click on the three dots under the tools here, it's going to bring up this dialog box. that's going to allow me to add tools in as well as drag tools off of that left toolbar. I can either scroll until I find a tool or I can go up to this drop down and sort of filter it as well as search for a particular tool. Now, if something is grayed out, it means it's already on the toolbar either as a standalone tool or as part of a group of sub tools, which is represented by the carrot on the side here. I can drag tools in either as a single tool or create my own subgroups. Again, as long as the tools I'm dragging in aren't already on the toolbar. So let's say that I want to add some of the tools from the layout studio into the vector studio because I use them every so often and I would find it helpful to have them here. I'm going to scroll down to the text options here and I wanna pull in the two picture frames and the table tool, but I don't use them often enough to have them taking up too much space on the toolbar. So what I'm gonna do is create 
a group of sub tools. So I'm going to start by pulling the ellipse tool onto the toolbar. I need to start with one and you can see that I have this sub tool here. Even if I have sub tools hidden by default, when this is open, you are going to see the sub toolbar here. So now that I have this in place, I'm going to grab the rectangle frame, but I'm not going to place it on the toolbar. I'm going to bring it to the sub tools here. And then finally, I'll do the same thing with the table tool. The only two things that you can't pull into a subgroup are separators and then an existing group of tools. Now, speaking of those groups of tools, one thing you're going to notice is that even though I just pulled the picture frames into the toolbar, and you can see that because they're grayed out, the group of them is still lit up. And I can add it to the main toolbar. So if I drag it over here, you can see that I've added that. So I have that, and then I have the one that I created. I'm not really sure why it allows me to add the tools the second time via a group, but just know that that option is there. Now, I don't actually want to do that, so I'm just going to pull that off to remove it. I'm going to make some changes to my panels next, so I'll close this out. And I specifically want to take my layers and just drag this over to the left. So you can see I got that drop zone. I'm just going to drop that. I like to have my layers along the one side by itself so that I have lots of room and don't have to keep scrolling. I'm also, I think, going to go in here and I'm going to open up panels and choose assets. And then I'll close this out and drag this over with my layers. And finally, I want to add some tools to my top toolbar. So I'll right click and choose customize toolbar. Now I tend to use the pinning a lot. So I'm just going to scroll down until I find that. Here we go. Pin to text. I'll just bring this up here. And I think I'll place a spacer between that. So you can see I have a small spacer and then sort of a medium sized one. This flexible space is this here. So anytime I add something, it's going to shrink. So if I place this, let's see, between these two, you can see that my flexible space left over is right there. I'm also going to find the preview mode and put that next to snapping here. And then I'll call that one done. And I think that's the only change I'm going to make to this. So now all I need to do is right click on vector and choose update vector studio. You can see I get a note there when it's updated. And if I scroll through here and go back, everything is just as I left it. And again, if I decide I want to revert back to factory settings, I can right click on the icon and choose reset vector studio to master, choose yes, and it's back to where it was. In addition to editing an existing studio layout, you can also create your own like I have here, either by cloning and adjusting an existing studio layout or by starting fresh. Now, since I just showed you how to adjust an existing layout, let's start fresh with this one. I'm going to go to the vertical ellipses and choose create studio. And I want to set one up for surface pattern designs. So I'll just key that in. And again, I don't want to clone this from anything. So I'm going to choose none from the drop down box. Now, instead of an icon, I tend to use photos. So I'm going to use this image of a cat and I'll choose this for the tab color and choose create. And you can see I have nothing in here. This is completely empty with the exception of a few defaults. So I'm starting fresh with this. I want this studio set up for when I'm creating surface pattern designs and I'm going to keep it pared down to the essentials that I need for pulling together the final pattern. So I've already created my motifs and I only need a few tools and panels to pull the final design together. So I'm gonna start by customizing the toolbar. I'll go ahead and click the three dots and you can see nothing is grayed out because there's currently nothing in the toolbar. I'll go up to the top and I know I want the move tool in there and the node tool and I'll place a separator under those. I like to have the fill tool in place because I use that to test my patterns. So I'll bring that in and I want to have the artboard tool. I'll put another separator and I'm going to scroll down because I want the shape tools, but I'm going to stick to the group so that I have a subgroup rather than taking up a lot of space on my toolbar. So I'll just drag this up to here. And then finally, I want the pen. So the pen pen and pencil tools. I'll place that there. And that's it. I'm going to go ahead and close that out. Now in the top toolbar, I'm going to right click, choose customize. And I know the first thing that I want to add is that export button. So I'm going to put that over to the right here. And I want snapping in place because that's important. So I'll place that there. I'm going to put a little bit of space next to it. And then again, pull in the preview mode. 
And let's see, what else do I want to add? I'm going to bring in the Boolean operations. I may not need it and I can always adjust that, but I'll just pull that in. And I like to have a range in there, but let's put a space between those. I'll also put in transform and I'll call that done at the top here. So again, I'm just going to put a little space between those and that's it. So I'll click done. And finally for my panels, I'll head up to window and open up the first panel that I want to add. I'll just pull in layers and then drag it over here to the left. Now I don't need to go back up to window. I can just toggle down on this carrot and open up panels. I'm going to run through the list and toggle on the ones that I need and then I'll sort them out on my workspace. So I know I want assets and color. I'm going to open up library and macro and symbols, swatches, and the transform panel. I'll shut that down and now I can sort everything. So assets, let's see where those are at. They're right here. I'm going to pull over to the left here. I want to bring color up to the top right. I'll add swatches right next to that. And then the transform panel. And I'm going to add symbols right below that. You can see I get those drop zones so I can link them below it. I'll add library next to that and then macros. And I'm just going to drag that to the other side. Once everything's in place, I'll right click on the icon for the studio and I'll choose update. Now that I've saved that, I do want to show you something with the panels. While adding a panel to the studio will lock its position within the studio, it doesn't lock its content. For example, I have assets set up in my surface pattern design studio because I have a pattern hub that I use to house designs to test as well as those I've completed and want quick access to. I have this open here in this studio, but if I jump to my main studio where I have it on the other side, you can see the pattern hub is showing here as well because I had just opened it. If I change this to something like my planner kit and go back to surface pattern designs, it's changed it here as well. So it's going to lock the placement of the panel, but not the content selected. Just keep that in mind. One final thing that I want to show you is why I choose not to add some panels into my studios. I'm going to go to my planner build studio and I'll point out that while I have several panels open, I don't have the text frame, character, paragraph, or table panels open and locked in place, even though I have the tools set up over here. And that's because I can very easily access them from the contextual menu. So for example, if I grab my text frame tool and I drag out a frame, if I select it at the top here, you can see that I can click on this and it's going to open up the text frame panel. I can click here to get the character panel and I can click on this paragraph icon to get the paragraph panel. I don't feel the need to keep them open here and taking up space and cluttering up the panels if I can just access them here. The same goes for the table tool. If I go ahead and drag out a table here and I click on this icon, it's going to open up the table panel. So again, just to avoid cluttering up my panels, I leave them out of the studio and access them up here in the contextual menu whenever they're needed. If you have any questions about what I've covered here or in the first two videos in the series, let me know in the comments below. If there's something specific you'd like to learn about working in Affinity, let me know that as well. I have lots more to come in the Affinity series, including deeper dives into the specific tools. If you've missed any of the other videos in the series, you can find them here in the playlist. Thanks for watching.